I'm not able to do the class tomorrow. So that's why I take one hour today and then uh, Friday the other hour lah. Okay, so that's why I did a replacement class uh, today. But without lecture, uh, I worry that you cannot start on your design project. Okay, so make sure uh, I know a few of you guys is still not there. I think uh, we have 11. It's only five here. Uh, but please help to inform your friends yang uh, tomorrow tak ada kelas. Uh, Friday we will have. But dah kena start already on your design project. This is already minggu kedua. You remember right? Our presentation and the report is minggu ke-6 dengan minggu ke-7. So minggu kedua tak start apa-apa lagi is a little bit uh, dangerous lah. Okay, uh, so please make sure tell your friend you have already start on the design. Okay, I will tell you later what you're supposed to do for uh, this one week. Okay. Uh, but before that, let me give you a little bit lecture on how to start a uh, design project one. Okay, so uh, today we're going to first identify what you're going to need to do as you start finding information to start your design project. So most of the time, student will have difficulty sebab tak tahu nak mula kat mana untuk cari information. Okay, if you realize, I already gave you the group for the design. Kan? You already know the chemical name and you know the production uh, rate. So the production rate is in terms of MTA, metric ton per year. Okay, so you only have two this information and you want to design the entire plant. Okay, so it's not that easy. It's quite hard actually and always uh, masalah dia nak tahu macam mana nak mula uh, to find the information. So that's what we're going to do for today lecture as well as a Friday lecture. Okay, so to just remind you, this is all what you need for your report one, which you will need to submit by week seven, presentation week six. So you have chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four, chapter five, six chapters that you need to do for your design. But don't worry, okay? Uh, basically, one student cover one chapter. That's what's fine. But yang problem dia bila nak decide dulu on the process and to decide on the diagram. The diagram to keseluruhan process tu yang sentiasa menjadi masalah. Sebab tu uh, minggu depan, minggu ketiga it's a little bit late. Biasanya minggu kedua tu saya dah start uh, discuss dah pasal project, uh, pasal design ni. Okay. So, a little bit late ready. I'm a little bit worried. Uh, please tell your members minggu depan consultation hari Rabu tu I will give you schedule setiap group setengah jam consultation. So, maybe group 1 uh, 5.30 to 6. Group 2 6, 6 to 6.30. Uh, group 3 6.30 to 7. Okay. So, Next week consultation tu dah kena start dah ada information. Tak boleh minggu ketiga consultation tak mula apa-apa lagi you cannot. Okay so again to remind you for those yang tak datang please remind your friend you already have to start finding information for your plan. Okay minggu ketiga dah ada dah at least you can tell me the process uh, information pasal proses tu. Okay kalau uh, you tak sempat nak baca pun at least you can tell me kamu dapatkan daripada literature. Okay doktor ni dua proses. Uh, okay Terangkan sikit supaya what's important because kita dah nak decide proses apa yang nak digunakan. Okay, so you have to already decide what process that we want to use for our plan design. Okay, so how to know? Find the chemical. You know the chemical, you assign the chemical. If I were you, uh, choose lah. Uh, process yang common one. Okay, of course it's up to you. Why sometimes I recommend common one because common process you have more information. So bila information tak cukup, uh, it becomes a little bit problem lah sebab kita nak ada kena banyak assumption kalau tak cukup uh, information. Okay, so that's your homework for next week consultation. You cannot come to the consultation without any information and eh? you must start finding information on the process process dua process sekurang-kurangnya dua proses and then tell me proses ni terdiri daripada apa raw material dia apa then apakah equipment yang mungkin ada digunakan if you can get example of the diagram even better of the process diagram even better so that we can decide okay all right so i will explain as we go on for this today lecture okay so today we are talking about uh, designing a plan. How do we start doing it? Because right now you're at the stage of starting to do the plan design. So what do you need to know? What you need to do? Okay. So first of all, in it, this is the flowchart from the beginning objective to the very end, your final design. Okay. So let's start with objective. Okay. What are your design specification or the objective of your design? Okay. So of course, in a very general term, important consideration for the when you're designing a plan is definitely the product. Okay, the need of the product, 
commercial opportunity as well as uh, predicted by the sales and marketing organization. So imagine kamu nak, katakan kamu sekarang nak bina one plant, a chemical plant. Of course, you will think about uh, what kind of product that you want to produce and whether there's a demand for the product or not. Okay, so for your case, you have don't have to worry about that because I already gave you the product. Kamu dah tak payah bimbang dah pasal product tu sebab product tu diberi. You assume that uh, you already given, okay, you're going to produce let's say phenol ke, uh, ethylene glycol ke, methanol ke, you already given. That's your end product. Okay, as well as kalau real chemical plant, you have to decide on the production rate. Even in this design project one pun, you don't have to worry about production rate. Production rate pun dah diberi. Meaning, let's say you're given phenol, production rate dia half a million metric ton per year. So, that's your production rate, that's your chemical. So, your objective are very clear for your design project, uh, for your plant design is that I want to build a chemical plant to produce, let's say, phenol at the production rate of a half a million metric ton annually. So, done on the objective. Next one, this is what that you need to do. Okay, this is the one that I need to see by next week. Collection of data. Okay, so to proceed with a design, the designer, which is you, must first assemble all of the necessary relevant facts and data. Okay, so for process design, this include possible process, equipment performance, chemical, physical, property data. Okay, so dalam report kamu kena ada semua ni. Tapi untuk consultation minggu depan, kalau nak suruh cari, nak suruh cari sampai chemical property data, I know it's very hard sebab you have a lot of classes, got a lot of responsibility. I don't expect you to sampai chemical property data. You can just present to me or just explain to me the possible process. Saya minta dua proses je, tak payah bertiga empat proses. Dua proses sahaja and kalau boleh setiap proses tu you have the sample of the uh, process flow diagram, PFD. Okay, so kamu ada, bukan kamu lukis tau, kamu dapat pada literature. Let's say proses A menggunakan method ni, kamu ada contoh proses flow diagram dia. Method B, kamu ada contoh proses flow diagram dia. Kenapa? Sebab saya nak try untuk uh, we will, uh, I will try to advise you which method or which process that is easier or more convenient for you to design. So from the process for diagram contoh tu, I can already tell you, okay, this looks a bit complex. Ah, uh, mungkin jangan buat. Okay, buat yang lebih senang sikit sebab dia banyak benda pengiraan. Di, ah, uh, if you have that, I can actually advise you. Of course, the choice is you. Kalau kamu nak buat yang complex, saya tak boleh paksa juga. But at least I can give you advice. Ah, uh, from the very beginning, whether you are, you are choosing the right process or not. Sebab kamu kena ingat, once kamu choose process tu, design project one, design project two, mesti menggunakan proses yang sama. Kamu tak boleh tukar proses. Uh, nak tukar equipment, nak tukar semua okay but tak boleh dah tukar proses once you decide. That's why week 3 next week, consultation. Okay, I terus to be tahu the schedule lah. Group 1, tengok schedule. Group 1, 5.30 to 6. Group 2, 6 to 6.30. Uh, 6.30. Group 3, 6.30 to 7. Nanti saya akan letak dalam calendar terus. I will book your calendar according to the group uh, and the time so that you will attend the consultation. Consultation is compulsory for all except if your friends have uh, MC ke, not feeling well, okay. Tapi the rest kena datang and semua pun kena present. I will ask each of you questions on the process. So all of you have to understand the process together. Okay, alright. Ataupun bagi kerja lah. Mungkin dua orang pilih satu proses. Dua orang lagi belajar proses satu lagi. So, you can divide the job lah. Okay. So, next one. Also, what we're going to do next week. Kita generation of possible design. So, by next week, seperti kata, kamu dah ada uh, information on the process. We can already decide on the design. Okay, so... Third step is actually uh, to sketch out the rough block diagram of the main stages in the process and to list the primary function and major constraint for each stage. So, maksudnya, from the process tu, kita akan come out dengan possible, katakan kita ada dua possible process, right? Okay, so, by right, at this stage, kita dah, setiap process tu, dia ada main stages dia, which I will explain later. Okay, so, from the stages tu, kita dah tahu sebenarnya berapa equipment yang akan ada. So, from that, we can estimate how complex or how simple the plan will be because the aim for me, I don't want you to design too complex plan. Of course, it's good. 
but amount of work and especially 14 weeks nanti dengan mass balance energy balance letter equipment design i would highly advise don't go too complex sebab so, tu bila kamu tunjuk proses kamu boleh tunjuk diagram dia daripada literature we can already guess berapa equipment macam mana flow dia complex ke tak complex so the same in the real chemical plant design pun you do like that okay from the literature you list out the possible design you will come up with what we call as block diagram rough block diagram so tak apa minggu minggu depan tak ada block diagram pun tak apa tapi we can discuss and we can roughly dah keluar dengan block diagram dia untuk kita tahu complex ke tak complex the plan that you going to do Okay, then we talk about plant design. Okay, you have to know in a very general concept, plant design ada banyak jenis. So, you imagine in uh, industry, plant design can be either modification of an existing plant. It can be upscale. So, let's say right now you produce 100 metric ton, 100,000 metric ton. You want to upscale to 200,000 metric ton. Double, right? So, the sum of the equipment, the process might need to be modified. That's also called plan design. And third one is what you are going to do. Okay, so in our project, what you're going to do is actually new process. However, in terms, in technical terms, macam lah new process. However, for your case, sebenarnya tak juga. You are actually modifying, because you check from literature, kan? Because I tell you, you find from common literature, right? So, from the literature too, we will try to, we will mod, apply, adopt and maybe modify. So, uh, most of your senior buat macam tu. Katakan dia pilih proses ni, dapat pilih literature, then dia suggest. Katakan, okay, doktor, saya rasa conversion ni rendah. Boleh tak saya tambah reactor lagi? Boleh. Or they say, doktor, dia guna decision column. Saya nak guna, let's say, separator. Boleh tak? Boleh. So, you can get for existing literature, you can try to modify the process, to improve the process, let's say. So, that one also is fine for me. So, me start lah, mesti kamu kena fikir daripada scratch, benda tu tak payah. Okay? You can get from literature, existing one, then you try to see mana boleh modify ke, maybe you can do something, you want to do something, it's also okay for design project one. Okay, so I can, you can realize I give you a bit of leeway sebab design project one ni banyak kerja. So, try to simplify. Uh, sometimes mungkin dalam dalam uh, literature dia guna let's say dua distillation column. Atau kamu kata uh, boleh tak guna satu distillation column? Boleh je. As long as you discuss with supervisor, you discuss with me, we can discuss and I can really help you to make sure your plan is not too complex. Okay, that's the aim. Jangan design yang terlalu complex sampai kamu pun tak boleh design. Okay, next one. Okay, then only we will choose. That's why it calls selection and evaluation. Okay, that's what we're going to do juga by next week. By hopefully by next week, kita dah boleh juga decide. So, dah tahu proses pada teacher, list out yang possible one. Mungkin okay, kamu nak discuss, nak modify. Lastly, from next week, minggu ketiga tu, kita dah kena decide on the process. Sebab nanti baru nak kena buat diagram, so on and so forth. Tak decide proses, kamu tak boleh start chapter-chapter yang lain. Okay, so then we will select and evaluate. Okay, so how to do the selection and evaluation. Okay, of course, uh, bila if on design project one, when you discuss with me, we will consider this factor as well, which I will also ask you. Okay, so uh, when we talk about possible design, Okay, kita kena we kena figure out the external constraint ataupun halangan luar. Okay, katakan kamu ada, katakan sekarang kamu dalam proses kan, sebab saya kata saya nak dua saja kan. Katakan sekarang kamu tengok pada teacher, ada 10, 20 punya proses. Let's say lah, you're lucky enough, uh, macam fenol, I think it's quite common. So, you might have different process, you know. Macam mana nak cut down kepada dua? Okay, so kamu kena consider lah resources, uh, physical loss, standard and codes, government control, economic constraint, safety regulation. This is on general one. So, you have to consider that. Let's say resources. Katakan proses A, the raw material tu you find out it's not available in Malaysia. You have to get it, at, you have to import it from overseas. So, you know that anything that is as imported will, of course, incur additional cost or perhaps your resources untuk process ni is a very expensive raw material, also a factor. So, you have to consider all this factor of the raw material. Physical loss. If you are using a harmful chemicals or certain chemicals are restricted by the country. So, Malaysia, we do have regulation of certain chemicals that cannot be, cannot be imported or cannot be simply use uh, in the production of chemicals. So, you have to consider juga the government laws. Uh, standard and codes. So, so remember, maybe uh, the, uh, the process uses equipment that will not 
be able to fulfill the codes and standards of Malaysia or engineering codes, so on and so forth. So they are the things that you may need to consider when you are shortlisting into two process. Okay. Now, let's say kamu ada dua proses dah. Okay. So, uh, kamu dah ada dua proses, kita nak tengok macam kita nak pilih proses mana. Okay. So, this process, we will consider internal constraint ataupun halangan yang lebih specific, which is process condition, material, uh, personal, time, method, choose of process, choice of process. Biasanya, why we have different process, Biasanya is because the chemicals are produced from different types of reaction. So, different type reaction definitely akan menjadi dah proses yang berlainan. Dia jaranglah jadi proses yang berlainan sebabkan separation. Dia biasanya sebabkan proses tu jadi lain sebab uh, reaction. Sebab tidak balas yang berlainan, of course your raw material will be different. Of course the condition also will be different. That's why you have different process simply because of uh, different kind of reaction. Sometimes you realize kamu tengok pada literature, eh dia guna raw material yang sama tapi dia proses yang berlainan because they use different type of catalyst. Pun possible when you use different type of catalyst, the process also can be different types of catalyst, uh, different, it can be considered as different process already because sometimes when you use catalyst, it's already a uh, different kind of reaction. Okay, so you might actually discuss proses yang menggunakan raw material sama tapi dia proses yang berbeza sebab dia menggunakan mungkin yang berbeza. It also can be. So, you have to consider that as well. Process condition. So, it's also a factor that you need to consider. Biasanya, kita favor proses yang tak terlalu severe condition meaning not so high temperature or pressure because you know, right? Equipment that can, if you want to design equipment that can withstand higher, high temperature, high pressure, definitely the cost of construction is going to be very high. Kamu kena, kamu dah tak boleh guna simply the material. You have to consider, let's say you're, you're working at temperature above 3400, you really have to consider using stainless steel. And stainless steel pun ada grade dia. So, stainless steel 315, stainless steel 314, so on and so forth. Each type of stainless steel ni ada grade dia according to the condition that you want to design for your equipment. So, that's also a factor. So, nanti kamu kena fikir um, energy balance, kalau penyeraan, kalau ada equipment yang melibatkan suhu yang tinggi, kamu dah kena kira energy balance. So, the more equipment high temperature, the more energy balance that you need to do. Kalau equipment yang, kalau mass balance tak apa, setiap equipment pun kena buat mass balance. Tapi kalau equipment tu uh, ada perubahan suhu, perubahan tekanan, you will have to calculate the energy balance. So, tu juga kamu kena consider. Okay? And of course, in the real situation, economical as well lah, we don't normally favor reactions are uh, processed at high condition tapi however most of the time high condition ni lah yang akan memberikan production rate yang tinggi memberikan high amount of product that's why sometimes chemical plant we cannot escape going to high temperature because usually that will give us higher uh, production okay so that's also a factor so after that only you will choose the probable design and finally probable design tu kamu dah choose satu process and from there you will study is there any way to modify or to optimize until finally you get the best design. So that's what you have to, uh, what, that's what is the consideration that you're going to do for the next uh, one week sampai saya jumpa hari Rabu minggu depan untuk consultation. Okay, so kamu ada empat orang kan? Maybe, okay, dua orang uh, study process A, dua orang lagi study process B. Okay, so nanti kamu boleh bentang kat saya. I uh, just want to see kalau boleh, contoh proses flow diagram, proses yang kamu nak tu. Supaya saya boleh tengok and I can tell you, okay lah, proses ni nampak kompleks. Nanti kamu, nanti you will uh, have difficulty later. Okay, something like that. So, please get prepared. Sebab kalau kamu tak prepare, katakan kamu kata kamu nak prepare proses B. Kamu rasa sekarang okay. Nanti kemudian bila kamu nak tengok balik, ah uh, pengiraan jadi problem, dia jadi problem. So, I want to avoid that problem at a very early stage. Okay, so this is what just now I discussed about the external constraint, internal constraint. So you can see if ever later you become, a, you work in a plant and then your plant wants to have a new plant. So you are involved in the design of the plant. Uh, these are a lot of things that you have to consider. Similarly dengan report design project one, nanti kamu, saya akan ajar kamu semua consideration ni and you have to learn how to uh, consider this when you're talking about designing a plant. Okay, next one, understanding the anatomy of a chemical manufacturing process. Okay, so walaupun chemical process akan jadi berlainan, okay, because of, of course, uh, different process, uh, the, 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 the processing steps, uh, the way can be different. However, in general, they have the same flow. 
okay, macam mana proses tu macam mana dia berubah pun, ataupun macam mana, ber, macam mana berlainan pun chemical dia tetapi sebenarnya atau cara ataupun flow proses tu sebenarnya hampir sama. What do I mean by that? The first step, the first stage definitely start dulu dengan raw material storage. Meaning in your plant you will have a storage uh, tank or storage equipment to store your raw material. Okay, of course depends lah. Okay, that's why I say in general. Tapi bergantung juga if your raw material are raw material that cannot be stored long. So perhaps you don't have a raw material storage. It depends on your process. Or maybe you can get continuous uh, uh, continuous material from the supplier. Let's say your supplier is situated nearby to you. So you don't have to have a big storage room. You can always uh, get the supply easily. So you might not have a raw material. Um, you might not have a storage tank, but often all the time we will have a raw material storage to stage one. Okay, so as I say, the storage depends on the nature of raw material, method of delivery, and assurance of the supply. So let's say in your case, you identify sebab tu kamu kena identify dah apa raw material dia. So kalau tekan raw material dia ada raw material yang highly uh, flammable or highly uh, it's dangerous. Okay, so probably you might consider tak nak letak banyak sangat, tak nak simpan stok yang banyak sangat. Okay, sebab kamu kata let's say you identify supplier kamu is very nearby. So you can always get continuous supply. So you may uh, eliminate this stage, you don't have a storage tank. Okay, first. Second stage is always feed preparation. Kamu nak prepare raw material dahulu. Okay, so sometimes your raw material, you might not get in the purific, in the quality or the, uh, the not in the uh, quality that you desire for your reaction. So let's say kadang-kadang most of the time, kalau kamu nak beli highly purity punya chemical, dia mahal. Okay, so you might choose to just buy and you treat first. Okay, that's why we call it fit preparation. You prepare first, then only you use in your react, uh, you use in your process. So they say, Purifications and preparation of raw material are usually necessary before being fed to the reaction stage. So this can involve purification or sometimes like say your compound is in the form of solid. Okay, kamu beli persepai, kamu dapat persolid. Okay, kamu tahu kan kalau continuous process, nak pump solid tu susah kan katakan kamu ada, kamu ada continuous process and raw material kamu solid. Okay, so kamu tahu kalau nak pump solid, it's very difficult. So you may consider dissolving it or melting it first into liquid. Then baru pump masuk dalam sistem. So that's why they call it fit preparation. So sometimes in, uh, in the plant, you have boiler. So kenapa ada boiler ataupun furnace is to melt first, jadikan liquid ataupun kamu dissolve dalam liquid. Then only dalam solvent lah. Okay, you dissolve in solvent or you melt it into liquid. Then only you pump to the system. So that's what we call as fit preparation. Okay, again, not necessarily setiap chemical plant akan ada. So that's nanti kita akan discuss benda ni dalam kamu punya plant. Setiap orang proses yang berlainan, dia punya benda tu ataupun roots ataupun dia punya keperluan tu bergantung really towards the plant. So certain plant, uh, maybe you don't need fit preparation. Certain plant, you need preparation. Certain plant, you need to store. Certain plant, need to store. So you have to consider all these uh, when we talk about your process. After that, stage 3, reaction. That's why they kata kamu ambil reaction engineering last semester. It's a four credit hour because reaction itself is one main stage in the manufacturing process. This is where we're going to decide on the reactor. Okay, nasib baik kamu dah pernah belajar dah reaction engineering. You somewhat already understand the design of reactor, apa tu reactor kamu dah faham. So, dia mesti melibatkan reaction to produce the chemical that you want. Okay, so that's third stage. Okay, so remember in your plan, kamu tak boleh, okay, this I have to tell you, kamu tak boleh choose process di mana, katakan fenol kan, okay, kamu beli fenol yang, uh, kamu beli fenol yang tak high purity, plan kamu hanya purify the fenol. Cannot eh, you cannot, uh, your plan cannot choose a process where just purification, tak boleh. Your plan must produce the chemical that you want to produce because last few last semester ada macam tu, dia suggest doktor, kita orang beli raw uh, fenol yang tak high purity, betul kita orang purify je dalam kita orang punya plan. Cannot. Okay, your case is you are designing the chemical plant where you produce the chemical in your own plant, not just to purify. Okay, so that's why I make it clear first, right? So, next stage, after you got, after the reaction, after the reactor, kamu tahu kan, mesti ada uh, 
product, side product and your unconverted reactant. Mesti ada kan kalau dulu macam reaction, ada tiga benda ni. Product, side product, unconverted reactant. So at the next stage, kamu akan separate, product separation. So you will separate uh, the product and by product as well as the unreacted material. So the unreacted material, uh, what you're going to do, you're going to recycle back. So separate, saya recycle back your unreacted material. So later in your plant, most of the time you will have a recycle uh, stream where you recycle back your unreacted product. Okay, so it depends. Kalau plant kamu, reactor kamu high conversion, then tak apa. Kalau high conversion, most of the time, reactor tinggal sikit. Maybe kamu tak nak recycle pun boleh. But most of the time, you learn kan, reactor very rarely we get high conversion. That's why we have to separate, recycle balik, masuk dalam reactor. Okay, one. Next, your product, your byproduct pun sama. You pisahkan, right? So, byproduct you asingkan, you buang. Okay, the product you will move to the next stage. So, product yang kita nak kan, product move to the next stage. Uh, unconverted, recycle, byproduct, remove. Okay, so the product will go to the product purification. So, kamu kena purify lagi sebab kamu kena faham. Kamu pun dah kena tahu berapa persen purity of your end product. Okay, nak tahu macam mana macam mana kita nak decide purity, doktor. Senang cara, I always tell you, Google, you find, uh, the easiest way is find from Alibaba. Alibaba got all the chemicals start, right? You see, these chemicals are usually sold in what kind of purity percentage. Okay, by right, cara yang betul adalah, kamu kena kena pasti who's your future customer, who's your potential customer and kamu kena tahu keperluan dia untuk chemical tu berapa persen purity. Dia tak semestinya kena 100% tau. It really depends. Certain application or the certain process, dia tak memerlukan chemical yang high purity. Okay, so you have to consider your potential customer and at what purity normally they require your chemical. Okay, itu cara yang official. Unofficially, macam saya kata, pergi je Alibaba, you will see, let's say phenol. Biasa phenol ni orang jual pada purity berapa? 98%, 90%, 100%. Then you decide what purity your product will be. Okay, again, purity, kalau tak ada decide next week pun tak apa, but eventually, you have to decide on the purity of your end and product. That's why ada stage product purification. Nak purify lagi, further purify. Separate, Satu lagi, purify lagi produk dia supaya you get high purification. And lastly, product storage. So again, you have a product storage. So storage tank for feed, storage tank for product because sometimes you might need to store before you send to your customer. Okay, these are the main general process okay, yang akan berlaku means kalau kamu perasan setiap satu kotak ni mewakili satu equipment. Meaning first, storage tank. Uh, fit preparation, depending, it can be furnace, it can be melter, it can be one equipment. Next, reaction, reactor, product separation, one more equipment, product purification, another equipment. So, separation normally maybe pump, uh, sorry, pump pula. Uh, maybe distillation column, separator, so on and so forth. So, you have two equipment. Next one, you have, uh, sorry, uh, fit preparation can also be mixer. So, mungkin sebelum kamu nak masuk dalam reactor, kamu nak kacau dulu, kamu nak campur dulu kedua-dua bahan ni baru masuk reactor. You might have a mixer in your fit preparation, possible. Or sometimes, let's say, your raw material tu kamu nak panaskan dahulu sebelum masuk reactor. Boleh juga. So, ada preheater. That also can be your fit preparation. Lastly, product storage is definitely storage tank. Okay, these are the main equipments. Tapi you don't forget, okay, kamu kata, alah, sikit je equipment. Don't forget, your plant also includes ancillary processes or we call it utilities. So, kamu kena juga consider utilities dalam plant kamu. What are those utilities? Utilities tu adalah supply of services that you need to run your chemical plant. Yang tu pun kamu kena design dan kira juga, which is one, Process water, cooling water, compress air, steam. Okay, then later you will learn about adding maintenance, adding firefighting, adding office, adding laboratory in your chemical plant. So, apa yang dalam kotak ni adalah dalam kamu punya logi kimia, tapi kamu kena consider juga and, uh, uh, the uh, utilities macam 
cooling water, heating water, uh, compress air, sometimes you use compress air, sometimes you use steam. Okay, kalau macam uh, the station column ke apa, sometimes you must use steam. Kamu kena consider juga. And then don't forget, you will use pump, you will use compressor, you will use expander. Sebab kalau nak naikkan uh, pressure, kena guna compressor. Kalau kamu nak uh, sejuk atau panaskan, heat exchanger. You might need cooler, so on and so forth. Yang tu pun akan ada dalam kamu punya uh, process flow diagram. Okay, sebab tapi yang tu kemudian, bukan kemudian. Maksudnya, kita tahu dulu main equipment, Then later we will discuss macam nak letak pula equipment yang auxiliary ni. Macam pump, heat exchanger, compressor, expander. Lepas tu kamu kena fikir pula next step nak letak kat mana. Di mana kita rasa kita perlukan equipment ni untuk support the main equipment. Okay. Then later on baru kita akan discuss pasal okay, our entire plan tu perlukan office ke, perlukan cafe ke, perlukan masjid ke, perlukan laboratory ke, perlukan apa. That is another more factor to consider. So what I'm talking about this must be completed in six weeks. Okay, tu yang masalah. Sebab nanti dalam minggu ke enam, kamu dah kena present ke semua ini. So that is actually the main stress of doing design project one. This stress masa buat project. Tapi let me assure you, Grade dia memang bagus. Design project kalau group yang memang buat kerja A, A main. Okay, ask your seniors. Most of them get A, A main. Ah, tapi kalau group yang tak bekerja but even tak bekerja also as long as you submit the report the worst you can go also is B main. The worst also B main. Tapi group yang biasa, group yang bagus A, group yang sikit-sikit A main, group yang average B. B is definitely in your hand. So, you must understand kamu kerja kuat ni tapi Definitely B and above is in your hand. And selagi you do the work. Okay, so I hope that can give you a, some sort of benefit, some sort of reward that you know you will get good grades if you buat je apa yang diperlukan. Okay, alright. So next, uh, deciding between continuous and batch. Okay, so saya rasa dalam kes kamu, basically dah continuous lah. Basically continuous. Tapi just to discuss, okay, why let's say kamu nak Katakan kamu nak plan, nak design plan, kamu terfikir nak pergi continuous ke nak pergi batch. So basically there are few criteria. Criteria pertama, uh, uh, continuous, if your production rate is bigger than 5 million kilogram per hour. In contrast, kalau batch less than 5 million kilogram per hour. Next, uh, continuous kalau you, is preferable if you produce single product. Batch if you are producing different type of product. So, katakan kamu uh, satu raw material, satu reaction, tapi dimasakkan a few types of product. So, you may consider batch. Tapi, it's very rarely lah kan. Biasanya kita, kita target satu product sahaja. Okay. Next, uh, no severe falling. However, batch severe falling sebab kenapa dia severe falling kat batch? Sebab kami akan continuous kan flow in, flow out, flow in, flow out. So, dia tak ada accumulation. Tapi batch kan dia akan accumulated. Batch kan tertutup. Certain time kamu simpan, kamu dia akan accumulated dalam equipment kamu. So, the accumulation for a long time will cause falling. Okay. So, that's one of the uh, disadvantage of batch process. Next one. If you use catalyst, continuous are better choice in comparison to batch. And a continuous is of course, kalau macam chemical yang dah established, di mana semua information dah ada, memang orang akan pergi kepada continuous. Sebab tu macam saya kata, proses kamu continuous. Sebab I choose phenol, I choose, I can't remember the other two chemical, but they are the basic chemical yang memang orang dah buat continuous. Orang tak buat batch dah, because the process very established or information dah ada. Okay, but, but, Let's say kalau in a real situation, you have a new process that you have no information about, people will go for a batch process which I already taught you uh, last semester. And lastly, uh, establish market. Sebab tu, kenapa? Sebab maksudnya, you have high production rate and kamu tahu dah ada market untuk produk tu. Tapi katakan dia tindak baras baru, okay? Ataupun kamu tak sure. Then you will go to batch. Meaning you want to produce a small production rate, you will go to batch. But if you have a uh, chemical of an established process at a high production rate, uh, people will go for uh, uh, continuous process. Okay. So next one on understanding apa uh, design project one, design project two. Because it's actually exactly following the phase one and phase two of your design, uh, plan design. Okay. So right now, kamu kat sini, phase one. Meaning you want to 
initial selection of the process, issuing of the process flow sheet. Sebab tu nanti kamu akan belajar block diagram, kamu akan belajar process flow diagram. Uh, PNID, piping and instrumentation diagram dalam design kedua. Dan design pertama kamu tak buat lagi, PNID. Okay. Specification of the process and design of equipment. Okay, design equipment pun tak sempat dalam design project 1. Kamu kena buat dalam design project 2 sebab mass balance energy balance tu pun dah nangis sebenarnya. Tu pun dah memakan minggu berminggu untuk buat. Okay, sebab tu uh, equipment design buat kat design project 2. You can never do it in design project 1. Okay, then next. Design project tu, ah uh, phase tu, you akan buat the mechanical design. Sebab tu nanti dia akan combine dalam design project tu, kamu akan not only you design, you also do the mechanical design. Kamu akan tentukan berapa besar, how big is your reactor. One. Hidayah ada soalan ke? Ke Hidayah tertekan mic? Okay. Ah, uh, uh, alright. Okay, so nanti design tu, bukan saja kamu akan design uh, the uh, equipment, you will determine how big is your equipment, what kind of material of your equipment, uh, specification of the equipment, everything you will do in your design project tu. Sebab tu saya kata, once kamu decide process kat design one, kamu dah tak boleh tukar kat design tu. Sebab dia akan datang, dia akan to do it together with a flow. Okay, so you have to remember that part. Right, so next, code and standard. So you must understand we are talking about designs of equipment, uh, plant design, we are bounded by code and standard. Okay, apa tu maksud code and standard? So codes is meaning code of practice uh, covering recommended design operating procedure. So kamu tak boleh sebarangan design equipment, I want to I want to design at 1000 Celsius, so on and so forth. You have certain codes of practice yang kamu kena ikut. Okay, so you have to remember when you're doing that. So this cover material, property, testing procedure, prefer size. So let's say prefer size ni macam tube dalam heat exchanger. Okay, macam pada dalam compressor so on. Tube tu, size tu dah ada dia punya specification. Kamu tak boleh sebarangan kata, okay, uh, my uh, heat exchanger, uh, tube tu I nak size 1 cm punya diameter. Cannot. They already has a specific sizes of the tubes. So you have to decide for your calculation. Okay, calculation saya ni, tube standard mana yang paling yang paling sesuai dengan pengiraan saya. Okay, so tube standard, tube size tu bukan ikut kamu. Kamu kena tengok fit to the standards that you already have or the codes of practice that they already have. Okay, so next is uh, design method, inspection, fabrication and code of practice for plant operation and safety. Nanti kemudian apa kamu kena consider juga? The safety aspect of your plant design. So you realize one chapter is on safety of your safety and environmental consideration of the plant. Okay, so that's on code and standard. Next on unit. Okay, so for uh, unit untuk pengiraan kamu dalam plan design, the unit must be SI unit. You may not use any other unit except for SI unit. Kita standardizekan semua orang guna SI unit. Okay, so please remember, even though you get information from literature, whatever, kalau unit dia bukan SI, tukarlah kepada SI. Okay, so that's on your unit. Consistency of the unit must be there when doing the calculation. Okay, and the design as well. Okay, so in a way, okay, to explain the plant design uh, for a chemical process, is basically transformation of raw material into product. Okay, and it cannot be achieved in a single step. Basically, it's divided into several steps each of which provide immediate transformation. Kalau kamu perasan tadi, bila saya tunjukkan stage, dia ada stage yang berlainan kan, bukannya satu stage tu dapat produk. Dia terpaksa melalui storage, melalui uh, purification, uh, preparation, reaction, separation, purification, storage, baru siap. So, dia tak boleh satu stage terus dapat produk, you have to undergo few stage in a chemical process. That's why you have a very comprehensive chemical plant. Because of that, it's not a straightforward process. And of course, you will have energy that you will need. You will have to supply certain amount of energy to the plant. And definitely, certain amount of energy will be released from the plant as well. So, that is what we're going to discuss in your uh, design project. Okay, so among other things that you have to consider, what kind of processing? Okay. Second, how should the processing step be ordered? So nanti kamu akan tengok sequence 
uh, sequence process ni logic ke tak? So, let's say you get from literature, if you have idea, you want to modify, okay, you want to make sure doctor mungkin step ni terlalu complex, boleh tak simplify? You can, okay, so we can always discuss, you may suggest how to simplify or maybe you have better idea nak improve on the plan design. You may do so for your design project, okay. So, what features require? To what extent can we expect each processing step to perform? Okay, so sometimes, kadang-kadang, let's say now you want to purify, okay, separate. Okay, lepas separation tu kamu tengok. If you can get a very high separation uh, standard, uh, uh, extent, meaning you really get product of high purity, not necessarily you must go to purification. So, tu saya kata step dia ada purification. Tapi katakanlah kalau separation tu, kamu tahu separate dapat product yang kamu nak, pada purity yang kamu nak, you might not need purification. Or certain time, even after purification, still tak dapat apa kamu nak. Kena tambah lagi. Okay, sama macam reactor. Sometimes you say one reactor, tak dapat conversion yang kamu nak. Kamu nak tambah reactor. Boleh juga. So, there are the things that you have to consider as well. How much energy needed? How much is produced? That's why ni kita guna mass energy balance. You calculate how much energy, let's say, kamu guna furnace. Mesti perlukan energy. Kamu nak guna uh, reactor at high temperature. Mesti perlu energy. So, you have to calculate berapa energy diperlukan for the acumen. And then for the plant itself, then how much feed do we require? How much product produce? This is mass balance. So mass balance ni jadi a bit tricky sebab kenapa mass balance menjadi susah untuk plant design sebab all this while when you're doing mass balance, you do from front to back kan means kamu dapat feed. Uh, fit punya nilai, kamu buat mass balance untuk tahu yang out. Saya tahu in, saya cari yang out. Sekarang design project jadi susah sebab kamu tahu yang out. Kamu daripada out tu, kamu kena back calculate melalui equipment, melalui proses sampai dapat berapa fit sebenarnya yang kita perlukan. So, part tu yang kadang-kadang student jadi confused, kadang-kadang saya pun susah sebab daripada belakang ke depan, dia kamu kena ingat tau, dia macam, kau imagine dalam chemical plant, dia ada at least paling kurang lah 15 to 20 pipeline, streamline. So, setiap streamline tu kita kena tahu mass balance dia untuk setiap compound dalam streamline tu. So, kalau mereka ada 15 ke 20 streamline, setiap streamline tu kita kena kira dia punya mass balance. So, that is actually the biggest headache in doing mass balance. Tapi tak apa sebab tu, if you discuss with me, I can tell you how to simplify, macam nak memudahkan pengiraan. Mungkin saya kata, okay, kalau pilih proses ni, mass balance kamu jadi kompleks, janganlah pilih. Okay, I can tell you because I've done a lot of uh, this with uh, other groups from your seniors. I can already tell you, mass balance ni boleh solve ke tak boleh solve. Kalau tak boleh solve, janganlah buat. Nanti susah nanti kamu kemudian. Okay, so next Next one, how much waste is generated, mass balance again, and how much profit could be derived. So, nanti dalam design project one, you will do a simple co uh, cost calculation. Ni estimation sahaja sebab stage one, kita belum design lagi the uh, equipment. Nanti dalam design project two, you will do a comprehensive uh, calculation on the cost. You will do it so comprehensively that kamu tahu, okay, Of course, the first few years, kamu kena invest kan? Nampak plan ni kan kena invest duit kan? But for your calculation, okay, based on your production rate, based on your income, future income, you are able to tag in design project tu berapa tahun your plan will eventually break even. Sebab tahun pertama, kan, tahun kedua, kamu akan rugi. Biasanya plan lima tahun pertama dia akan rugi. Sebab dia kena invest banyak kan untuk bina plan, dia kena invest the construction, everything they can invest. So normally it will take about 5 years to break even depending on the complexity of the plant. Sometimes 10 years pun tak break even lagi. Bayangkan? So that's why later at plant design design project tu, you will calculate and you will tell me, okay, uh, you will tell your, your lecturer, not me, tapi biasa saya assess plant design tu. Biasa saya assess plant design tu, Dr. Syahira yang ajar plant design tu akan assess plant design 1 supaya kami dah tahu benda tu Dr. Syahira akan tahu daripada plan design 1 dan saya pun dah tahu bila plan design 2. So, you will, I will, you will probably present to me in design project 2. You can tell me 7 years baru plan saya boleh break even. Ah, Kalau kata 20 tahun memang tak possible lah. Bank up lah nak tunggu 20 tahun baru break even. The plan will definitely close before it reaches 20 years. Normally 5 years ah, to break even. Okay, so that is your design project 2 lah. You don't have to worry that much in design project 1. Okay. And then baru lepas kita dah tahu proses, baru kita buat proses flow sheet. Bukan yang ni, yang atas ni bukan ni, is too simple. Nanti I will, I will teach you process flow diagram. Yang bawah ni, ah, this is some, uh, this is the process
process flow diagram but I will teach you later but this is an example of a process flow diagram so kamu tengok ni uh, kalau saya jadi kamu kamu pilih proses ni saya kata kamu janganlah kamu nak buat ni kamu bayangkan nak kira mass balance dia menangis seriously will cry not only you cry I also will cry sometimes senior kamu jumpa saya few semester ago masa pandemik tu pasal yang paling kesian lah sebab pandemik I cannot meet physically you know I only meet online and certain things online tu susah nak discuss sebenarnya so it's very challenging for your seniors masa pandemik nak buat design project dia dah tak boleh jumpa group meet uh, tak boleh jumpa saya jumpa kat online tak boleh jumpa fizikal so it's very challenging so of course I will tell you janganlah pilih proses macam ni menangis betul nak buat uh, mass balance tu okay so next baru buat equipment design tapi at this stage belum lagi kita akan buat pada uh, design project tu this is not with me this is with Dr. Shahira Uh, probably Dr. Syairah, most of the time Dr. Syairah lah. Uh, tapi kita tengok macam mana uh, 